So now that this thing works pretty good, I want to make it look cool. I picked up this clear replacement shell for it and we just have to disassemble the entire thing. First, we're gonna take out the battery and now under the warranty void sticker, I have a little razor blade here and I'm just gonna try and get in under the corner. There we go. Warranty is now void. Now we can take those screws out. So I'm using a Phillips Zero. I'm gonna need a longer screwdriver for that one. There we go, now there's one on the bottom and two on the top. These top and bottom screws are different from the other ones, so I'm keeping them separate. Okay, this one's come right off. Connector off the bottom here. And you gently pry up on that, but not remove it completely because it's still attached underneath the screen. So that's out of the way. Now I can take the screen, it's just clipped in this little metal thing right here. Okay, so we're gonna start pulling that off and then pull it towards the top. So we can fold it all the way down and now we have the connectors right here. So we can just undo this one. That's for that control panel right here. It's for the actual LCD and this one is for the backlight. Now we have this metal bracket right here that holds the screen so we're going to take that out. And then we can take these shoulder buttons out. There we are. Now we can undo this brown one here, and this black one right here. There we are. Now we should be able to take this off. So it should just unclip from here. Take that cable out with it. And then this right here, we can just slide that out. Now we have another one here, which is a black connector. And we can take this screw out. So now we carefully have to take this off. Now we can take the memory stick out, and this should just come right off. There we are. Now we can lift this tab up, take this screw out, and this can just come right out. It just slides out. This one right here, lift that ribbon cable out. And we can also undo this one, lift that ribbon cable out. And since we're here, we can undo this one, and then just pull that ribbon cable out. Now we can just very carefully wedge under the antenna to get that off. Move the DC jack here. That just goes up. You can push it through from here and back. In here, just get a little twist. And it's out. So you're gonna move that little tab over toward the left and the speaker pops up. Then we can just pull it over to the left. It comes right out, have the contacts on the bottom. Now we have to remove this shoulder button very carefully. That's out. Make sure this antenna is run out. Perfect. Now we can undo this screw. Now we can take this power button off. All of that is disconnected. We're going to have to get underneath this. Slowly start prying it up. Take this bottom piece off. And take this screw out. Now this should just lift straight up. That's one. And then this one just goes right beside it. And I believe that's it for holding this down, so this should just come out. Yeah, there we go. Now we can take this out and this little spring. So this has to go forward and up. Okay, we'll put that here along with the spring. The spring just pulls out and the little hooked area goes on the inside. The longer one goes on the outside. I guess we can remove this, a little common ground. I don't really see anything else that we can remove from this side. There's a little rubber block. So let's switch over to this side, open this drive, and now there's two little rubber things right in here. Gonna take those out. That's one and two. Now we should be able to just push these out because now there's no rubber block in the way. There we are. Then we can just pull that tray right out. Perfect. Okay, so let's take this, open it up. And now let's try and pull this out like that. Awesome, and now this just comes right out. There we go, four more screws right here for the UMD. Now this should just come out. 
There we go. Make sure those ribbon cables aren't in the way. Now yeah, we got a little piece of plastic here. That's for the release. Now we just gotta take this top piece off. There we are. Another one in here. One more here. And then it should just come right out. There we are. Now you can see a little spring right here. Make sure that doesn't get missing. Now this just has two clips right here and right here. And then my thumb over the spring so it doesn't go flying. That spring, I can just pop that out through the top. Now we just need these little metal tabs. Next one. And I just need this little rubber block right here. And now I believe I just have to take the rest of that sticker off right here so I can take the Wi-Fi board out. Yeah, I think that's it. There we go. Okay, so it's stuck on. I tilt it like that and just pull it through. Okay, I believe that is completely stripped down now. Yeah, I don't see anything else that we need. So maybe we just get tons of screws and everything and a new spring and all the other stuff that goes with this. If we lose a few things, it won't be the end of the world. We've got a new door for the memory stick. However, I want to use the factory ones because they look better. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well, but the font on this one. It's a lot smaller, it's higher resolution, and it's deeper in the plastic, so it just looks better. So I'm not going to be using the ones that come with it. I can go over there. I will be reusing this one. All we gotta do is start assembling this. So I'll take this off and pop this drive door off and out like that. Now we can take these pieces. We could even reuse this white one. Might actually look kind of neat having it in there. Tolerances are probably better too because it's legit Sony parts. Let's see, which one do we want to use? They're basically identical, although just holding it, you can feel that this one is better quality. So if I put it here, this one sounds like Lego. This one sounds solid. It's kind of flexible. This one doesn't flex at all, and if it does, it's probably going to crack. So I also think I don't want to use that. Let's take that spring, this guy. So we can pop this top piece off, because we're not going to use this one, because this is the aftermarket one. It's going to go in our pile of things that we're not using. Right, same with this bottom piece. I'm not going to use this one. So now this has to go in that hole. So these go in with the little hook facing down. So those are in. Now this has to go, as the top goes first, and then the bottom clips in. Perfect. Now that spring has to go in between there. Stick it onto a little prong there, and then have to squish it down and onto the little white thing. So it's under that little white thing right there, and it's on that little prong. So now it works. Perfect. So now we can take the UMD drive, put that ribbon cable back through, put that down on the standoffs. That ribbon cable goes through getting caught. I mean, I guess that's the plus side of having a clear case. You can see where everything is getting caught. There we go. That's pretty solid. Make sure those little rubber grommets don't pop out so everything's fine. Okay, now this is the part that sucks about these aftermarket ones is none of these holes are threaded. So we just have to be very careful and very slowly put these in. And they will self-tap into the plastic. So I'm going to put it in a little bit, dig it out. Put it in a little bit, dig it out. I'm going to work it in can't just go for broke, otherwise they're going to crack. I guess for copyright reasons they weren't allowed to put PSP here, although that would have been cool. So this side goes in first, you can see this little channel right here, so it just goes in and it clips in place, and this one right here, you just get the little teeth around it, like that, and you just kind of flex the case and put it in. There we are. Now we can put this little bracket thing back in. So now these two little pegs right here just go into the sides of the UMD door. This has to go in here. <laughs> it's going outside of these things. Come on, get in there. Oh, I guess it helps us putting it in the right way. This goes this way into here. One side's on, get the second side on. There, Jesus. 
That was a nightmare. Now I just gotta get these things over so that's in there, just like that. So now this has to go in and down into that little channel. And the same thing with this side. There we are. Should be able to open it. Everything's fine. Now we just gotta put those little rubber things back in so they don't uh, pop out. You need tweezers for this. Okay, I found tweezers. I can just take these, make sure the double-sided tape spawn is on the bottom, and just stick them in there where they go. Okay, and next one, which is right here. And let's just go right in here. So now they're done. Everything works. Perfect. Now I can pop off this battery cover and we'll take the Wi-Fi antenna and we'll put that in. So that just goes through like this. There we are. And there's these two little prongs right there. So that goes on that. And then it just sticks down like that. And we can take the sticker and we can put that back on. Okay, there we are. Now we can put that spring back in the bottom here. So you can use this new one, or we can use the factory one. And I'm going to reuse as many factory parts as possible because they are better quality. So now this has to go in through here, like, th like this. And then this has to get pushed down and into that hole. Can make sure it's in there. Now we can use the white one because this clear one is really sketchy. Goes in like that. And this clips in place. There we go, so that holds the spring in. Make sure the switch is in the same orientation as the switch in here, so they're both toward the right. And then this just clips in place. Oh, wait. This has to come back out. I forgot to put this little rubber thing in. It goes right here. And I forgot to put that common ground in. Now we can put this back in. So make sure this corner goes under, make sure the port goes in. There we go. It goes into those alignment pegs. The antenna is now in place. I can lay this down over top. It just goes on this peg right here. And it just goes on there. Now this guy can just slide in and it just sticks down. So now let's put these back on, which also has the barcode on the bottom for the serial number. So that's neat because it will still match. It's going to get these little things to all slide in place. Now this one actually has to go behind it, put that part in first, and then slide it down. There we are. Awesome. Now we can put this board back in for the power switch. So we can put that ribbon cable in, and just make sure it falls right in that channel for the switch. Just like that. Awesome. Now we can screw it in. Now I guess since we're here, we can plug these in. Pop this one up, and this one. Now we can do the speaker, and that was relatively easy. Just gotta make sure a little tab goes underneath there. And then this one just has to move over, so we have locks on top of it, and that speaker's in. Now we can do that DC jack right here with the screw. Wrote the cable management. Can just lift this up and get that in. Screw for that. I'm just going to make sure this ribbon cable goes in there. So it has a little channel where it's supposed to go and it's not going to bind. Now I believe it is time for the joystick. Now I can pop the black one off and put the clear one on. Perfect. And then we can just take the connector and put it in there. Okay, good. Close it. And now this just slides in. Now the screw for the thumbstick. You can also put the screw in for this trim. Now we can do this. So this one here, I'm going to try and put it in and get the cable in at the same time. That'll just make my life a little bit easier. Okay, there we go. That ribbon cable is in. Clicked in place. This can just get pushed down. Make sure that goes into the channel. Now we can push that down. Okay, so now just make sure that those both go on the outside. They don't actually go on the port by mistake. The memory stick, that can go back in now. 
And that'll hold it attached to the logic board. Now we can do these shoulder buttons, I guess. So now let's put that screw in. Okay, now we can put this little thing back together right here. And we can lift these, this one, and we can put those back in. Now this one can just go in, go in more better. There we are, put that down. And now we can put the display back on. Maybe I should reuse the black buttons. Hmm. Okay, I was deciding between the buttons while the camera was charging, and I, I'm gonna go with the clear ones. The black ones would be better, just because they're better quality buttons. Like these ones, emblems are just painted on, so they're gonna wear out right away, but they do just, they look better than the black ones. The black ones just stand out a lot. Put that in there, get the display. Just that one and this one. Okay, so let's make sure that backlight cable is in. Good. Make sure that display cable is in. Now this little metal bracket has to go in. It goes into this corner right here so that way the display can come down and then it latches into it and holds it all nice and straight. That clips in. So now in theory this should work. Pro recovery menu. So there's a button being pressed. Works. Just gotta problem solve the buttons now. Okay, so after more messing around, I realized what the issue was. When I took this off and I was prying across the bottom to remove the adhesive, it actually damages this inside piece right here, which always makes contact with it. So, you just take a tiny piece of paper and you just lay it in here. And all you want to do is just make sure it goes right in the corner, just to make sure that it adds a tiny little bit of space so that way it's not going to squish and touch it again. And we'll do the same for this side. So then it can just go right in the corner, just like that. Now if we put the triggers back in. And this issue can also occur just with lots of gaming. If you push the triggers too hard, they can squish into each other and then they won't stop making contact. That's how to fix them. So all that's left at this point is to put the faceplate back on. So I'm just going to turn it on one more time, just make sure everything's good. Awesome. So everything works. Just got to clean the display. Okay, so now we can put the whole thing together. These two small ones go on top. This wider one goes in on the bottom. Now these last four screws. And I'm gonna put the warranty sticker back on. Make it look legit. Perfect. Battery in. Cover on. That side isn't sitting right. It's all done. I put rock band in there. So let me turn it on. You can see the disc spinning. And then the disc still reads totally fine. You go down to the memory stick. And we can play games right off of the memory stick. Everything works. Left, right, gas, brake. Right, you can change the views and everything. Thumbstick works. Handbrake works. Look behind us. We go back to the main menu. Everything works. This thing is like perfect. We even have the VSH menu so we can overclock and underclock. We can change which USB device we want to connect to. And then we can shut down or reboot it right from this menu. So hopefully you got something out of that. Absolutely sucked trying to take this thing apart and putting it back together. Uh, like the video, dislike the video, subscribe if you haven't already. There's a join button if you want to help support the channel. All the tiers are the same. All you do is you get access to the VIP section of the Discord, as well as watching any of the videos the second they're released instead of waiting for the upload times. So click some of those buttons or something, or don't do any of it. I'm not telling you what to do.